hello again. We are back with another episode. I'm here with Andy from Snow Camps Europe. Hello. And I am Paul from Ski Instructor Academy. And today we are, because we're building into our ski analysis series again, and we're bringing in more technical stuff, and we're starting to, for those that follow the YouTube channel, look at skiers and actually talk about how we improve them. Andy and I thought we would look at the most common errors that we see in skiers on the piste after decades of working with skiers. It's interesting, actually, that you can sort of put things down to four common mistakes, in, in my opinion. Obviously, people will have a different opinion. But I would say there are four classic common mistakes and things link from that. And of course, if we start off with the main one, it's probably going to be the one that everybody hears sitting back. Yeah. And um, this brings me on to an interesting one, because it's something which maybe we'll discuss, and maybe I'll, I'll do it as well um, when I do some ski analysis stuff, but bad cues from coaches as well, because sitting back to me is a bit of a bad cue, because at some point in the turn, we're pay playing with what we call four and a half balance, mm -hmm. and we do want to use the aft of the ski, because a ski has three radiuses built into it and the releasing of a curve comes from the tail more than it would do from the tip but let's just look at it as a sweeping statement of sitting back do we ever see that andy <laughs> all the time all the time um, and i think we should say sitting back at the wrong point of the turn that's what it is sitting back at the wrong point in the turn yeah um so, so some people will be sitting back all points of the turn, <laughs> right. uh, which is probably at the wrong point of the turn. So, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, it, I think a lot of people, when they first start, are in a back position, sat on the toilet or whatever you want to call it. And I think what quite often happens is the solution that they're given is drive your arms forward, mm. which doesn't always address why somebody is sat back. And, and I would argue that driving the arms forward pushes something then back, usually the butt. Mm, so I often exactly. see that a lot, which really irritates me. I am going to do an episode, Andy, and I'm going to stand on the Kitchstein horn one day and I'm going to video ski instructors going down doing exercises that are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll have a great series with that one. Um, but yeah, Andy's right. Um, just telling somebody to push their arms way too far forward, especially as the elbows leave the rib cage you're encouraging an opposite movement with yeah. the backside. <laughs> yeah. And um, again, it's, if you look at it of why is the person in a back position, some people are just in a back position because they think that's standing on a ski, but there is other things that could be also happening, which I think people sometimes miss. And I had it the start of last week with the group I'm teaching at the moment. There was one lad who was in a back position and he had no control of his skis. And I instantly went boots. And he was fighting to try and keep his feet on the sole of the boot because the boots were so big, he was naturally pushing himself back. Yeah, yeah. If the boot's wrong, wrongly fitted, if you go back to my boot fit series and we talk about, you know, how a boot can push somebody into the back seat. And this often happens as well is if they're in a boot, Andy, that's too stiff. As they go forward to the front shaft, the front shaft has a spring mechanism that is pushing them back as they hit forward it pushes back mm -hmm. there's a every action has an equal opposite reaction so it encourages again sitting back and one of the big things i think from my side that leads to sitting back is a disconnection it's the fact that people don't understand talk they, they, they make movements on the ski because it's a moving platform and it just feels easy as you're sliding down a hill with absolutely no body awareness and body tension, like mm. zero. They, they don't understand how to pull themselves down and push themselves up. Instead, they flop around. Um, and also because they exaggerated this level of vertical up movement, it swings them then back as well. Yeah, and uh, I think, yeah, it, it, and I think ski teachers, when they explain the up movement, need to be very careful that they don't ex they tell people just to come up. Because if you come up, you come up and back, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Um, your shoulders. Especially at that back. level. Yeah. 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 Um, the other thing um, which just came into my head then about sitting back was um, it didn't help that through most of the 70s and 80s, we were told to bend our knees. Yeah. Because if you bend your knees, what are you doing? You're pretty much going into a seated position mm. where what they were wanting to tell us was uh, activate your ankles so your knees go forward. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. 
So I think people who, who learn to ski at a certain time when they were, and I think this was down to a language thing because the ski teachers could say benzinese, but they couldn't say activate the ankles um, because it just wasn't in their vocabulary back then. Yeah. But um, well, this that, comes back to just flexing the F out of your boot, mm. i.e. just shoving your knee forward or actually using the levers in, in your body correctly with, again, torque and tension. Yeah. And ankle tension is time sensitive what i was saying to the group yesterday was if you go off and you set off and you don't have ankle tension you ain't going to suddenly get it as you start to make turns you've already lost it and at that point you're back you're going to find it difficult you're fighting all your way through each curve the, 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 I, I didn't say what you've just said the last two days, but I've been doing short turns with a group for the last two days. Last week was all about long turns. This week's all about short turns and trying to get into them, into, get into their head that you don't start to move until you've thought about what you're about to do, how you're going to do it, get yourself ready, get your core slightly tense etc 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 because if you're on the third turn and you've not already done it you're not gonna be able to do it so yeah. set yourself up before you push off i will uh, you know head. add on the top here somewhere or a link in the description and uh, where you can follow a live lesson um that i did just yesterday um and it was about that it was about saying to people you know before you cue yourself to ski off remember it's a sport mm -hmm. remember it's going to get dynamic it's going to get quick there's going to be pressure there's going to be forces and there's going to be load so if you think you can set off <laughs> daydreaming about whatever you're going to watch on netflix tonight and then suddenly just switch on part way through the turn yeah. you're going to get a bit of a shock so prepping it in this whole sweeping statement of sitting back and um, it, it really needs to dress because there's many reasons why people do it mm -hmm. many. Yeah. yeah i think an another one so i think have we have we finished with that one um, we could do. Do we finish with that one, or do we keep like, talking we, we about could, it? We, we could go on for hours. We, on could, it, we, we? Could, we could, but okay. There's sitting back. But what's what, what's the next one then? Obviously, we, we we've spoken off camera about the ones we're going to talk about. But obviously, um, rotation, upper body rotation, um, and counter rotation is is one we see a lot because people seem to think that to get the skis to turn, if they twist their body, it will make it easier. Which okay it, it does help you can get the ski to turn but does it make it any easier no because then the reaction of the the twisting has an effect on what's going to happen next um but that's something i i would say we see probably second most out of sitting back yeah ro rotation's an interesting one because strangely enough there is a group that comes every year on the mountain that actually teaches people to twist the rotation brigade as we call them the rotation yes. brigade yeah they actually actually teach people to twist their upper bodies rather than turn from the feet if you like so mm. a common cue you hear from ski instructors is you turn with your feet and um, whereas they do it from the other side down and they turn with their body and they do it primarily because they're trying to teach people to make life easy in the off yeah. east and um, but of course it has when done incorrectly huge detrimental consequences because you basically if you encourage somebody to twist at the wrong point like that they're going to fall onto the inside ski most people mm -hmm. and on top of that because ski instructors use terminology terminology like um separation for example separation can be really misunderstood even by the ski instructor himself because he's echoing what he's heard throughout his his training and his association that he works with so it's a very confusing part and and one thing that's important when when i'm doing any strength and conditioning and um coaching i always try to include rotational movement because a lot of what we do is bilateral in a gym you know we don't get to use unilateral rotation movements so I do encourage it in the gym so people have an understanding of it and um, but on the skis it's what Andy's really talking about is where you clearly see somebody initiate the turn with the upper body and the shoulders like literally swing around and then the ski is aggressively flicked almost mm. because there's a twisting force there's an angular momentum that they can't control especially because they're usually sloppy in their body as well um again there the, sometimes it can be a helpful movement pattern to make and this is understanding when rotation is done correctly it can be good when it's done incorrectly which is what andy's talking about here like a beginner would do it it's detrimental and you see it from the plow turn up over you yep. see rotational movements yeah, yeah. yeah um so you put that down as your number two 
Um, certainly for me, my my big number one, weirdly before sitting back and rotation and all that, is this Viagra leg. So it's this <laughs> idea that this bracing the outside leg yeah. and pushing it's 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 from the start the, the people do this they really really feel that as the hills dropping away from them they just have the natural reaction to stretch the leg out and to push and especially if the ski is not a critical edge angle so you know you're not actually on an edge and carving if you push all that happens is the ski either judders and you see that wobbling knee leg thing or It'll just, the base of support keeps moving away from you and your center of mass keeps moving inside and you end up dropping to the inside too much for that style of turn. So for me, from plow turn to short turns, especially short turns, that pushing is, it just winds me up. (laughs) It really annoys me because it's so easy to fix. And once again, in the virtual lesson that I did with this group, that is what I was concentrating on is fixing that action and it comes a lot from people at that level where they're a bit better skiers you know they've done 10 to 20 weeks they've been hockey stopping aggressively Mm -hmm. all the time 40 50 times a day people hockey stop one thing you probably notice as well is most people when they hockey stop they hockey stop on one side yeah they always stop the same way and they will tend to really push hard and they'll the in the, you see them tip completely to the inside as they do this, um, and that that's my that's my pet peeve is pushing on the on the leg, and it 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 just really destroys the whole dynamics of that ski that you bought. You know the camber of the ski, the side cut of the ski, the ability to steer everything because your anatomy reacts to that pushing and it's very hard for you to internally externally rotate within your femur it's very difficult for you to steer or anything because everything's just locking up under vibration and load mm. and i'm sure you see that in the short term andy yeah. and of course it leads to pushing. I'm, I'm, I'm just having flashbacks over the last two days of what i've been doing with with the with the group with the short turns and yeah it's it's I've, I've got a funny one and this isn't this isn't probably one on on our list of things that we were going to talk about but it's quite funny i've got one lad who um he cannot pole plant on the right side at the right time. He's pole planting on the opposite side every single time. And it doesn't matter what you say to him, he continually pole plants on I the wrong side. Have you tried giving him two different coloured gloves? Like, oh, yeah. I've just told him to stop pole planting. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because I did a, an episode once and said, stop pole planting because sometimes when you're teaching a group, you have to say to them, listen, guys, just take the pole plant out. Has anyone ever taught you to pole plant? And normally it's a no. Normally mm. they've learned it just because they've seen it around on yeah, the slopes yeah. and they, they start pole planting. And it can be so disruptive when it's done wrong. That's an extreme what you're talking about. Mm. Obviously, planting uphill is definitely not yes. good. But normally the timing when it's missed and it's wrong, and that's what you see mostly with a pole plant, it, it, you're best off just saying, please guys, don't pole plant at this stage. We'll add it in again at a later stage you know so yeah but pole planting yeah it's a it's a weird one and then one of the other ones that is on our list and i've got i've got a lad doing this as well funnily enough but he only does on his right turn so we've been doing short turns and his short turn to the left is quite nice but his short turn to the right it just falls inside dips dips in every time i think it's important to recognize the difference between what you're talking about um of tipping inside the turn and inclinating, mm. let's say, in a long term. And I, I always say that the two differences, first of all, you have to understand the difference between inclination and angulation. And I asked my trainers this question um, that had just recently done their level four. And none of those level four, recently qualified level four trainers could explain to me the difference between inclination and angulation to what happens. And it was very simple. Inclination we use to get the ski onto a higher edge. And angulation is when we want to pressure the ski. As soon as somebody angulates, they put pressure to the outside ski. And that's what it's there for. The inclination part is just to get the high edge tilt above the fall line. And then at that critical moment in the apex, I want to angulate because I want the pressure and then I want to release it again on and off the edge. Now with a short turn, this action of falling or tipping across the ski is when you see too much extension in the joint. So the ankle, knee and hip overly extend. They then lean like they're doing a hockey stop their center of mass comes way too far in on a short turn and it means for them to make the next turn 
it's almost impossible because mm-hmm. then they've got to send her a mask all the way across. The distance, distance to, to travel is yes. increased. Whereas yeah. a good skier in a short turn isn't going to have that much pelvis movement. Right. You know, they're going to restrict that and use the angulation from knee rotation, which is something you can see if you go into my ski analysis videos where I talk about the importance of knee rotation and where angulation comes from in a short turn is a lot different to where it comes from in a long turn. But this tipping is very, very common from mm-hmm. skiers. All the time, you see. Mm-hmm. All the it doesn't time. help that he's really tall. He's two metres. Yes. He's so two metres. We had two in the group yesterday and I said to both of them, you two are tall and any movement you make with your leg is exaggerated compared with a small person. Yeah. If you just move and you think you extend your knee and ankle joint, you'll be shocked at what happens to, to your height. Yeah. It's going to be, you know, exponentially increased to somebody who's smaller. And I told them to remain far more flexed um, than normal. And I said, look, and they, they had to ski in a deeper position to allow for the fact that they're so tall, they don't have time yeah. to make these movements. He's massive. He is massive. Um, the other thing, or an, another thing. Mm-hmm. Looking down. Looking down at your feet. Looking down at your feet. <laughs> or looking at your skis. Looking down at your skis. Yeah. I've got video after video. Um, I'm very lucky because I can video 200 people over, you know, up to 11 weeks. So I've got video after video and Andy's right. Like the number I was watching, some of the trainers had obviously done video analysis. So I, I you know, look through and see what they've been up to. And I was thinking, God, yeah. I mean, what are they looking at down there? Like, is there something stuck on this ski? Is there something? <laughs> There's so it's much weird. more to see. Yeah, it's, like, it's a beautiful mountain. <laughs> but yeah, people people do look down. And of course, as we know, we go where we look. Yeah. You know? And this is why it's a trick in skiing. And I was saying this years back, how ski in ski racing, they were starting to use the eye line very, very in a clever way to bring them around the turn, you know, far better than they had done previously just by moving the, the eye line and moving the head. Mm. It was such a clever mechanism to bring the skis round. But equally, as Andy says, if you're doing a... You normally see it in plough turners, in fairness. That's where it happens a lot. Um, and then in short turns, I see it a lot, where people are looking at the skis in, yeah. in short turns. See if turns. they're close together. I, I, I'm guessing they're looking to see if they're close together. Um, but yeah, it just... It's, yeah, yeah. Looking Not at, much looking chance of them doing feet. a mogul field if they're doing that. No, uh, it's no, be, not it's a chance. Get difficult. Especially when we say look three bumps in front. Yeah, if yeah. you're looking at your feet, then you're yeah. on your backside. I'd I say. mean, these are these are very much um, some of our practical things we're talking about. You know, yeah. sitting back, rotation, bracing of that outside leg, and um, tipping into the turn. Things like looking down pole plants. I would see them as. Um, the micro things that go mm. on. The big macro things are those four. And I would add a fifth one and say the psychological threshold of some people where a ski instructor, and we've all done it, <laughs> point the thumb at myself, takes somebody on a run that you shouldn't have took them on <laughs> in the fall to bits <laughs> yeah, where they're psychologically challenged. And, and every, it does happen to everyone and it happens because you think that maybe they can do a little bit more than you thought and you take them somewhere and it all Or you don't wrong. like them. But I think... Once you've done it once, you learn very quick. No, you don't ever do because it Because your life becomes painful for about <laughs> half an hour getting them down. And you, you, I think you think, right, no, I'm not going to do that. And this goes back to something, I don't know if we've covered this, but it might be a good one to cover, is skiing with your... My, I don't need a ski lesson. My friend is going to teach oh, me. Yeah, my yeah, husband yeah. is going to teach me. My sister's brother is going to teach me. And even though they have skied for many years and they're probably quite competent skiers and they may have done a little bit of teaching, if a group of people turn up in Caprun on on, on Saturday and Jane is going to get taught by John, who's in the group, and John's never been to Caprun, John doesn't know that if he goes up that gondola there, there is no suitable terrain for Jane. Yeah. And he has to go to that part of the village and he has to stay there, stay there with her for probably two days. Yeah. Now, what then happens is John starts to get pissed off because he's missing his ski holiday, mm-hmm. sat on a, a nursery slope because in his head, skiing's quite easy. And he thought him and Jane could go up this mountain. Yeah, within, you know? within one or two runs. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll and, tell you and, how to do it. And Go on. No, no, no I'm saying that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, I, I, I can show you that. Yeah, I can yeah. show you that. And, um, and, and we find, well, yeah, people fall out. <laughs> 
people fall out. Yeah, or they, they, they spend a, end. Yeah, and they, yeah. they spend a long time sidestepping and slipping, and yeah. it's embarrassing. And as a ski instructor, as Andy says, once you've done that mistake once, you think to yourself, "Oh, everybody's seen me sidestepping with that group or yeah. sideslipping on them." <laughs> it's embarrassing. I remember, <laughs> and I'll not mention his name, but uh, one of our, one of the Romanian guys who used to work with us, who um, decided he had to end the lesson and do a walking tour back up the Black Mamba. Oh. <laughs> Because they couldn't get any further down. And I'm not being funny. Skiing down a black mamba is hard, but walking back up it... Must be even harder. I, I would have probably just left them. I'd <laughs> said a skidoo. Well, again, and again, this goes back to... Um, uh, side slipping is the most underrated skill. Yeah. And if you can side slip, you can get down anything. And people don't seem to teach side slipping enough... And skiers don't seem to understand how useful it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I know Absolutely. we're going off on a tangent, but it's quite important. Right, exactly, Andy. You spoiled our next good. podcast because we could have been talking about the most underrated exercises, which would have been, you know, like side slipping would have been, would have definitely well, been we can there. do that anyway. People have forgotten after they've watched this. Yeah. People don't even listen to this far. I mean, we're into 21 minutes, Andy. <laughs> we're, on our, we're on our own now. So do we have any more? Or they were, they were well, our top we four, were they? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's more that there are millions of, of different little micro er errors. But what we're trying to say is, and I think most ski instructors out there will, will, agree that there are sort of these top four things that everything else links to you know if somebody's psychologically challenged they'll sit back they'll rotate they'll do all those things mm -hmm. if somebody's making a really stupid vertical movement to release the skis they're going to crash down they're going to end up rotating and sitting back it, it, it's sort of you know it's all a cause and effect thing yeah. but what you see in, in the effect will be sitting back somebody falling to the inside somebody rotating or somebody you know, going into no t uh, sorry, um, emergency break and sticking that leg out as hard as they can, believing that that's going to slow them down and bring them across the hill, for example. Um, and that's all I wanted to say about that, really. Um, if we, you know, if you're more interested in this, then look at the ski analysis series where we have groups of trainee instructors and um, camp people and stuff like that. Maybe, you know, Andy can bring some of his camp videos down. I can show you some of our stuff and we can talk through it and show you what we did to try and, you know, progress and to get them through these errors as, as quick as possible. And that's what it's all about. Everybody wants the simplest and fastest solutions nowadays. So mm. if it's there, we would rather do that. All good. Good stuff. Bye for now. Bye for now. We'll see you in the next see one. You in the next one.